house will come to order. Prayer by the chaplain. First, a word from a Christian scripture. God causes the rain to fall on the righteous and the unrighteous. Let us pray. God of the just and the unjust, we ask for your presence here in these chambers today and always. We ask for your blessing, for your grace in the midst of difficult challenges, for energy during days filled with meetings, negotiations, and long sessions. We know that rain falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. Occasionally we tend to think that we are the righteous, and if we are the righteous, perhaps some others are less so. Since we all bear the burden of that attitude, shower your grace upon us all, courage and compassion, insight and openness. And as we receive your blessing, help us to look around and rejoice with each other, all standing in the rain together. Amen. The chaplain for today is Reverend Paul Rogers, uh, our former house chaplain uh, from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Pledge of Allegiance, please remain standing and recite uh, the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. The clerk will take the roll. The clerk will close the roll. A quorum is present. The clerk will read the journal of the preceding day. Journal of the House, 88th session, 2013, 24th day, St. Paul, Minnesota, Monday, March 11, 2013. If there's no objection, further reading of the journal will be dispensed with and the journal will be uh, approved as corrected by the chief clerk. Hearing no objection, the journal is approved as corrected by the chief clerk. Reports of standing committees and divisions. A copy of this order of business is placed on each member's desk. Uh, if there's no objection, the reports will be adopted. Representative Doubt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to a point of order under Rule 1.10. Uh, state your point of order. Uh, my point of order is, Mr. Speaker, uh, Rule 1.10 states that in regular session, a bill prepared by a department or agency. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll repeat that. Uh, my point of order is that uh, Rule 1.10 um, of the House Rules basically states in paragraph 3 that in a regular session, a bill prepared by a department or agency of a state government must be introduced and given its first reading at least 10 days before the date of the first committee deadline. Uh, the, the, the bills that actually uh, were introduced to the Rules Committee and are, in, are, are part of this uh, uh, Adoption of the committee reports, uh, House File 1358, House File 1359, House File 1389, House File 1390, and House File 1448. All uh, were received and introduced, uh, and not, not received, but were all introduced uh, past that 10-day deadline. Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. 
Yesterday, the Rules Committee, we did uh, take up four agency bills uh, per custom and usage of the Minnesota House of Representatives under Rule, point, rule 1.10. And uh, it is a continuation of the work that we have been doing uh, to advance uh, bills to the Committee of Jurisdiction using both the joint rules, Rule 2.03 on budget bills or finance bills, and using has been, has been our tradition, Rule 1.10 uh, for agency bills that have not met the deadline. As I expressed in the committee yesterday, we believe it's important that we move bills to the Committee of Jurisdiction, but I followed up with uh, Council afterwards um, just to make sure that we're on solid ground. So in addition to custom and usage, which has been our tradition that agency bills that do not meet the deadline do go to the Rules Committee and then to the Committee of Jurisdiction, Council suggests that in the absence of clarity in our House rules, the joint rules, Rule 2.03, has guided the work of the House and the Rules Committee. And it is in the Joint Rules 2.03 that indicates that a, a committee bill, an agency bill or a finance bill that has not met the deadline goes to the Rules Committee for re-referral to the proper Committee of Jurisdiction so it can be heard, debated, and processed by the Minnesota House of Representatives. We were working within both custom and usage, the Joint Rules, in the Minnesota rules of the House, we're working on solid ground uh, procedurally. But more importantly, I would like to say that we are almost to the Easter Passover break. And when I go home over the Easter Passover break and our colleagues go home over the Easter Passover break, we're going to be able to talk about the things that we have been doing here in the Minnesota House of Representatives. And I will be, along with my colleagues, talking to the members or the constituents that we represent about important priorities, jobs, the economy, strong education, reducing property taxes, and honestly balancing the budget. Sometimes I think you're going to go home and talk about process, and that will be your choice. It is important, from my perspective, that the Mr. agency Speaker. bills that the agency bills, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Speaker. Representative Dowd. Uh, what order of business are we on? Uh, we're on your point of order. Yeah, is the uh, majority leader offering advice to the, to the Speaker? I am offering advice, Mr. Speaker. Thank that you. That under the rules, the joint rules, the rules of the House, we are following the procedure as well as custom and usage in taking the bills up in rules and referring them to the Committee of Jurisdiction. Representative Doubt. Uh, I rise for advice, Mr. Speaker. State your advice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and members, um, I appreciate the Majority Leader's advice. Uh, however, our rules are crystal clear. And uh, I appreciate the fact that we're citing press, uh, uh, custom and usage of this body as a reason to uh, allow the, uh, the Rules Committee to actually waive the rules of this body. That's what's going on here, members. We're actually waiving, we're allowing the Rules Committee, which is a minority of this body, to waive the rules of the House. And we're citing custom and usage. Let me talk a little bit about that, okay? Mr. Speaker, we actually had rules proposed this year uh, that had some, some, uh, some language that would have allowed the Rules Committee to waive the rules of the House. That language was pulled out. And custom and usage of this body over the last, uh, over the last two years has been that when a, when a when a bill like this does not meet deadlines, by resolution of this body it proceeds, not by the ability of a committee of the House of Representatives to waive House rules. And if we're going to allow custom and usage, which we all know, members, and, and Mr. Speaker, I'll remind you, custom and usage of this body is a lower precedence than the House rules. House Rule 1.10, paragraph 3, is very clear that if an agency bill does not meet, is not introduced in this body 10 days before the committee deadline, it's out of order. Rule 1.10 is very clear on that. Rules 2.03 of the joint rules does not deal with this issue. It simply talks about that the governor must introduce his, his budget bills within 15 days, which we know he didn't do. We know they were late. And yes, they do have to go to the rules committee. But it doesn't say that that can happen 
And that rule is not in conflict with Rule 1.10. They both talk about two different things. One is the early deadline, the 15 days within the governor's budget. We need to see the bills in bill format. The other deals with agency bills must be introduced in this body 10 days before committee deadlines. And I know these bills aren't things that are highly controversial, but what I'm very worried about here, Mr. Speaker and members, is setting a precedence. When are we going to decide that a very controversial issue that didn't meet de deadlines in this body can be introduced in the Rules Committee and the Rules Committee, a majority of the Rules Committee, which is a minority of this body, can waive the rules of this body because we're citing precedent, uh, a precedence of custom and usage. We absolutely can't allow that. Doesn't matter if you're in the majority here or the minority, we all know that the House rules are of higher precedence in this body than custom and usage. Mr. Speaker, I argue that this is absolutely crystal clear, and I, and I request that you actually make a ruling on this. Thank you. Representative Doubt, uh, a question for you, just to clarify, what exactly are you asking for on this point of order? Uh, I'm saying that adopting this committee report is out of order uh, because these bills did not meet Rule 1.10 of our House rules. And, and Representative, just to clarify, your objection that they didn't meet the, the House rules is because they were introduced, so the bill introduction happened after the 10-day rule? That's correct, Mr. Speaker. Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And just one more point of advice. Uh, this is not precedent setting. And that's why we're referring to custom and usage. And again, I'm referring to our rules, the joint rules of the House and the Senate, and custom and usage as argumentation for why uh, the committee is following the proper procedure. It's not precedent setting. Representative Doubt. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I appreciate that, and I, I, I have a bit of further advice. State your advice. Thank you. And, and maybe the majority leader would be willing to uh, cut, a little deer, uh, cut a little deal on the fly here. Um, I know that these, these, these bills are not controversial, um, and, and I'm certainly happy with letting these bills proceed, but the proper way to do that is through a motion here on the House floor. We can't ask the members of this body uh, to allow rules to be waived by a committee, and that sets a very dangerous precedence in this body. And, Mr. Speaker, uh, if we want to go down that route, I'm going to ask you to, to, to make a ruling on this, but I certainly am not objected to letting these bills proceed. Um, but the proper way to do that and the precedence of this body over the last couple of years, I don't know about before that, I wasn't here. I can certainly look back further. But the, 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 uh, the precedence in this body has been that we do it by a resolution here on the House floor, and that's consistent with our House rules. So I'm willing to work with you in whatever way you want to handle this that's within our rules, and we certainly can do that, and we can do it very quickly here, I think, today. Um, so having listened to the advice of Representative Murphy and Representative Doubt and um, reviewed the rule, the rules, I guess, both the joint rules and the House rules and the order of business we are currently on and the status of these bills in the process, uh, I find that the point of order is not well taken. Mr. Speaker, I appeal the ruling of the chair and request a roll call. Representative Doubt appeals the ruling of the chair. If there are 15 hands, there will be a roll call. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and members. Uh, what we're doing here is about to set a dangerous precedence in this body. And we had this conversation when we were adopting our House rules. What we said was that we weren't going to allow a minority of this body in a committee to waive the rules of this body, to waive the rules of the House. 
and we cite custom and usage and say that in the past, years ago, they used to do this. I don't know that. I know over the last two years we didn't. And on bills like this, what we did was we had a motion right here at the desk, and this body made the decision on whether those bills would proceed. And members, I would be happy to stand at this microphone and speak in favor of a motion to allow these, these bills to proceed today on the House floor. But we can't, we can't allow a committee, and we can't give up our authority. Uh, Mr. Speaker, maybe you could bring the chamber to order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, apparently, members don't think this is very important. We're going to let a committee of the House waive the House rules. I appreciate that you're listening. Thank you. Because uh, not everybody is. And I hope that you're paying attention, members. This is a pretty dangerous precedence to set. These rules are just about as crystal clear as you can get. Some of you are thinking, not a big deal, not controversial bills. What happens... And it might not be this year, it might be two years from now, when majorities have changed, that a bill might come forward that didn't meet deadlines, and all of a sudden it's a controversial thing, and this body doesn't get to decide whether it moves forward. We let a committee of this body make a determination on whether we're going to waive House rules. House rules have a higher precedence, we all know that, than custom and usage in this body. We're setting a very dangerous precedence if we don't say that we're going to honor our House rule. Sounds like a minor deal right now, but we have the rules for a reason. I don't care about the content of the bills. Like I said, non-controversial. I'd be happy to stand up and speak in favor of a motion to allow these to advance. But why are we choosing to proceed by allowing the Rules Committee to waive the rule in order for these bills to proceed. That's not consistent with our House rules, members. These bills were late. They didn't get to us on time to be introduced prior to 10 days before the first committee deadline. They're late. Our rules are crystal clear. They don't proceed unless this body, you members, you get to decide whether they proceed. Unless you rule with the speaker right now, and say that we're going to allow the Rules Committee to overrule the rules that you voted for. Very, very dangerous precedents. And I'm going to be watching, members, for the sneaking the bills through. And that's what the public's worried about. We think this is a, a, an argument about something that's in the weeds. You know, process argument. Nobody cares about this. They're going to care when the first controversial bill comes in and we don't follow our own rules. We put rules in place for a reason. Let's follow them, members. I'd ask you to vote against the speaker and overrule the speaker. Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Dangerous precedent, he says. Not a dangerous precedent being set here. You know, we put the rules in place for a couple of reasons, and of course we've talked about this before. We want to make sure that the voice of the minority is protected and heard. But we're also here to make sure that the, the work of the majority to govern is, is allowed and advanced. We are abiding by our rules. We are honoring our rules. Joint rules, house rules, custom and usage. We are honoring our rules. The process is transparent. The bills need to get to the Committee of Jurisdiction so they can be debated on behalf of our constituents. Please uphold the ruling of the Speaker. Representative Sanders. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Advice? You can just speak to the body. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, I urge you to uh, respectfully rule against the Speaker. Members, Representative Dowd is absolutely right. These rules could not be more clear. These bills are in violation of House Rules 1.10, and all the, the remedy for this is for the body, this House floor, according to these rules, to make the motion to send these to the proper committee, not the Rules Committee. Members, these rules that we adopted are your rules. All we are asking you to do is play by the rules that you wrote. Go by the rules. This point of order was a good point of order. 
We ask that you uh, uh, reject what the speaker ruled because our house rules have precedent over joint rules. They have precedent over uh, uh, custom and usage. Our house rules, which are your rules that you wrote on this issue, could not be more clear. And for that, we ask you to please overrule the speaker. Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take... Oh, so members, the order of business before the body is an appeal of the ruling of the speaker. A green vote uh, would uphold the ruling of the speaker. A red vote uh, would go against the ruling of the speaker. Uh, the clerk will take the roll. The clerk will close the roll. There being 72 ayes and 57 nays, the ruling of the speaker stands as the judgment of the House. Representative Doubt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I would like to uh, object to the adoption of the committee report on, the, on uh, committee rules and legislative administration, uh, specifically House File 1358, uh, House File 1359, House Files 1389, House File 1390, and House File 1448, and I'd like to request a roll call on each of those. All right, we'll take those one at a time. Um, any other ones people want to take out? All right, so uh, the first, on the adoption of the committee reports uh, for everything but 1358, 1359, 1389, 1390, and 1448, hearing no further objection, uh, those reports are adopted. 1358, uh, roll call has been requested on the adoption of 1358, seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. Representative Doubt. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, again, I think uh, we've talked about this. Uh, this this bill obviously did not meet uh, the deadline that's outlined in House or in excuse me House Rules uh, 1.10. Um, actually, what needs to happen here is a motion from this body to allow this bill to proceed. Um, I'm giving you a second out here, guys. I'm giving you a second opportunity to say that we're going to follow our House rules. I'm happy to support the motion. And, and I know you don't like hearing the sound of my voice right now, and you're wondering, gosh, we should be in committee, and we should be, and we could be, had you followed the rules. A simple motion to allow these to proceed would have had me standing at the microphone saying, yes, this sounds great, let's do it. Non-controversial bills don't really care that they miss deadline, but the fact is we're not following our House rules. So I'm going to ask that you vote against adoption of this. Let's send this back to rules and let's do it the right way. Representative Murphy. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker and members. This is, of course, an agency bill uh, that is heading to uh, committee so it can be heard uh, by the committee of its proper jurisdiction. That would be the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources Policy. And I would ask that uh, we let it go on its way. All right, seeing no further discussion on the adoption of the committee report, a yes vote would adopt the committee report, a no vote would not adopt the committee report. Uh, the clerk will take the roll. Clerk will close the roll. Clerk votes aye. There being 71 ayes and 57 nays, the committee report is adopted. 1359, a roll call has been requested. 
Seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And members, um, I'd like to ask uh, Representative Davids to yield for a question. Representative Davids will yield for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Davids. I, I guess I'm calling on you. You're the most uh, senior uh, member of my caucus by seniority, um, certainly not by age, and, and uh, uh, you're very youthful. Uh, but uh, would like to know if you can remember a time when we've allowed, when this body has allowed a committee to waive the rules of this body. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Davids. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Dowd, I do not, uh, and I think you gave me every out, and I, I really think we could speed things up if we would just do it correctly and, and follow the House rules. This is uh, unprecedented and, and certainly unfortunate. Representative Dowd. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Representative Davids. Um, I, I think I could probably go around the room and ask everybody to yield for a question uh, and ask them if they can remember a time when we've allowed a committee of this body to waive the House rules. But I think what we're going to find is that the answer to that is no. And my, my uh, you know, what I'm trying to accomplish here isn't to delay us, it's to prove a point. And you're probably going to get sick of this by the time we get to the fifth bill that we've got on the list. But members, this is an important thing. And I'm, I'm, I, as I said earlier, I'm going to be watching when the controversial bill that we're trying to sneak through uh, without it meeting deadlines and, and, and without the public having the opportunity to give the input that they deserve, when we're going to sneak that bill through and not follow our House rules because we've set some sort of precedence here by allowing the Rules Committee to waive the rules. And the right thing to do here, members, is to send this bill, House File 1359, send it back to the Rules Committee and just do this the right way. A quick motion at the front desk will be consistent with the custom and usage of this body over the last couple of years. It will allow these bills to proceed, and it's the proper way to waive the House rules for this body to do it, not for the Rules Committee to do it. I'd ask for you to vote against this bill proceeding and, and vote red. Thank you. Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I'm not going to speak long because we have committee work to do. House File 1359 is on its way to the Committee Workplace and, uh, Workplace and Regulated Industries Committee so it can be heard by the Committee of Jurisdiction so it can be debated on behalf of our constituents. And I'd ask you to please adopt the committee report. Seeing no further discussion, the uh, clerk will take the roll. Clerk will close the roll. There being 72 ayes and 57 nays, the uh, report is adopted. House file 1389, a roll call has been requested. Seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Um, actually, uh, you probably don't know what happens when these bills get introduced uh, or when the agency has the bills drafted in the reviser's office. They send a copy of the bill. The reviser's office does. I'm sure it gets sent to the majority offices. They also send a copy to the minority offices, something you probably didn't know. House file 1358, not the one that we're on. I probably missed my opportunity to say this, but I'm going to take an opportunity now to tell you because all of these bills miss deadline. House file 1358 was in my office on February 6th. February 6th, members, drafted and down from the reviser's office, but not introduced until after the 10 days, so the public doesn't have the opportunity to give input on these bills or the appropriate amount of time they should have. These bills were in hand. Now we're waiving the rules for no reason. The bills were in hand. They were prepared, or at least I know that one bill was, because it was in my office on February 6th. So I know it was in your office as well on February 6th. But because we weren't organized, or I don't know what, I guess I don't know what the reason was. Maybe the majority leader would yield for a question. She will yield. Representative Doubt. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and Majority Leader uh, Murphy, uh, maybe you can tell us, why is it that these bills weren't introduced on time? I know that House File 1358, at least, was in my office on February 6th. What is the reason that these bills weren't introduced and the public didn't have the opportunity to give input on these? And right. why is it that we now have to waive the rules and, and have these things proceed uh, when they were in in plenty of time to meet the 10-day deadline? Why are we doing this? Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Doubt. I am glad that you're interest in, interested that the public should have a chance to weigh on in these bills. And, of course, that's going to happen when they get to the Committee of Jurisdiction, which we are trying to accomplish. You're asking me why. And, of course, we talked about this in the Rules Committee yesterday at length, and we can talk about it here again as well. The bills were in the Reviser's Office with our staff being drafted. And as soon as we're getting them, with the exception of one, which you've highlighted, they get to the author and they get introduced. As I understand it, they were introduced, each of them, in March. And let me just say, as we are discussing this, the likely proper motion for you have to have made earlier was about the introduction of the bills. Um, and maybe we would have had a different discussion. But that's not the motion that you made. And that's certainly not the motion we're on right now. Just a little advice for the future if we decide to have this exercise again. One of the bills, the bill to which you're referring that was in your office, went to the bill's author. And the bill author did some review before the bill was introduced. I think that's okay. A bill author should have that opportunity to do it. The other bills didn't get to us until after the deadline. And we know that our staff are working hard to process the bills that all of us are introducing. And that's why it's important for us to have the means to move the bills through the Rules Committee to the Committee of Jurisdiction so the citizens and each of us have a chance to look at its contents, debate it properly, transparently, and openly. And we're going to do that when we get done with the floor tonight, when we get back into committee. Thank you. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. You know, obviously, uh, you, you know that I'm not happy with the way we're proceeding here. And the reason? We've decided that it's easier to violate our rules than to do what's right and simply put a motion at the desk. We could all be in committee right now doing the people's business listening to the important bills that are waiting there to be debated, but instead, we're here talking about rules. Why? Because we didn't follow our own procedures. We didn't follow the rules that you put in place on yourself, the rules that we all voted for that would determine how this body would conduct its business. That's why we're here right now. So I'd ask you again, to vote no on this. Let's send it back to Rules Committee. Let's put a motion at the desk, and I'll be the first person standing at a microphone speaking in favor of the motion to allow this bill to proceed. But let's do it the right way, members. Please vote no. Clerk will take the roll. There being 70 ayes and 57 nays, the motion or the uh, report is adopted. House file 1390, a roll call was requested. Seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, one more. I actually thought I had you on that one. Thought I made a compelling argument, but I'm going to take one more swing at it. Over the last two years, I commented that the, that the precedents that this body set through custom and usage, was to have a motion at the desk. Four times in the last two years, members. I just happen to have them here. House file 1588 didn't meet deadline. What did we do? We brought a motion to the front desk. 
to refer it to the Transportation and Policy, excuse me, Transportation Policy and Finance Committee. What happened? The body sent it there at the body's will. We didn't let a committee waive the rules to send this bill on. Didn't meet deadline, but we handled the business according to and consistent with the rules of this body. And by motion of this body, the bill proceeded. House file 1609 from the last legislative session. Didn't meet deadline. What did we do? The bill came here in the form of a motion to allow it to proceed. What happened? It passed, and the bill continued on. But we did it in a manner that was consistent with the rules of this body. We didn't allow a committee to waive the rules and take away your power to represent your, repre or, excuse me, your constituents and the bill proceeded, but we did it the right way. House file 1629 from the last legislative session. That one didn't go to rules. We didn't allow the rules committee to waive the rules of this body for this bill to proceed. You guessed right. It didn't meet deadline. And magically, the bill was able to proceed. How? A motion came to this desk for your consideration, and you voted to allow it to move. You didn't give that right away to a minority of the members of this body in a committee to allow that bill to proceed in a way that was inconsistent with our rules. It worked. Why? Because we followed our rules. House file 2728 from the last legislative session. Members, you guessed right. That one missed deadline, too. But for some reason, it was able to be heard in this body and proceed through the committee process. Why? A motion at this desk allowing it to proceed in a manner that was consistent with the rules of this body. That's how we do our business here. In a very orderly fashion, operating under the rules that we adopted that outline how we do business. You know what I'm worried about? I'm worried about what other bills, not these five bills, not House File 1358, not House File 1359, not House File 1389 or 1390, and not House File 1448. But what happens when the controversial bill comes? The one that the public cares about under the dark of night, it flies into a rules committee. Now it's not meeting deadlines, and we're allowing that bill to proceed. How? Because we let a minority of this body take away your ability to represent your constituents. Maybe you can bring the body to order, Mr. Speaker. Maybe I did it myself. Not by letting the rules committee take away your right to represent your constituents. The bill needs to come here so that we together can talk about whether it should proceed or not. And in cases where it should, where there's a reason that it didn't meet the deadline, I'll be the first one standing at the microphone speaking in favor of letting that bill proceed. I can't believe how casually we just throw our rules aside. Makes me a little nervous about what's to come this legislative session. Twelve hours we, we debated these rules and talked about what was the way we were, how, how were we going to operate this body? How were we going to conduct business? And what expectations could people outside of this building have on us? What transparency was going to be there? And what was their ability going to be to participate in the process? Twelve hours we debated those rules. There were actually rules in that debate that said we were going to allow the Rules Committee to waive the House rules. We talked about that. They actually, with bipartisan support, were removed because we understood that that's a very dangerous precedence, members. We don't allow the Rules Committee to waive House rules. 
We absolutely don't do that until now. And what are we to expect? What's the minority to expect? What is the majority going to inflict on the minority the next time around? Maybe it's not these five members, but what is it going to be the next time around? And if we're worried, maybe the public should be worried. Why we can't follow our own rules? I'm going to ask you again, members. Please vote no. Seeing uh, Representative Draskowski. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, uh, we formed these rules out. This was a contract. This was a contract among all of the members here that these are the rules we were going to follow. We remember the discussion. We talked about trust and how necessary it was that trust was not only embodied in the development of the rules in the de debate that night, but the implementation of the rules going forward. Well, members, what we have before us today, there's a rule on page 6 of our rules, Rule 1.10, and it says, in a regular session, a bill prepared by a department or agency of state government must be introduced and given its first reading at least 10 days before the date of the first committee deadline. Well, members, Representative Doubt has been outlining several bills, and that's this, this adoption of this committee report is about one of those bills that didn't meet that committee deadline. The government did not get their bills to the author in time. And we heard the majority leader with her impassioned discussion about, well, these bills didn't get to our, our people on time, and, and uh, well, we had to bring them through. Well, members, the rule was written so that the government realized that this institution needed the bills in time, 10 days before the deadline. The government did not bring their rules forward, or didn't bring their bill forward. So we are violating our rules because these agencies fail to adhere to the rules we provided and put forward for them. And so the majority apparently feels it's okay to, to stomp over those rules and just act as if they didn't exist. Well, members, these rules are for the majority and the minority. They're not just for the majority to whip the minority into a certain position any time they believe they can do that. Members, I, I hope Minnesota is watching to what is happening here today. As a majority just selectively decides that we're not going to adhere to this rule because we want to get through with our business in the way that we want to get through. Rubber stamping these bills forward and disregarding the will and the respect of the minority. Members, that's what's happening for those of you that are voting green on these particular motions. Members, I urge you to vote red. Respect this institution, respect our contract, respect the minority, and respect the people of Minnesota that we all represent. Representative McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would Representative Pulowski yield for a question or two? No. Would Representative, uh, will Majority Leader Murphy yield for a question or two? She will. Representative McDonald. Would you say that this body and what we do here is important and that we abide by rules is important? Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Representative McDonald. Majority Leader, would you say that if we're re disrespecting rules and not abiding by them, that that is completely disrespectful to the minority and to the House rules of this body? Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And members, as I said before, we are abiding by our rules, which I believe is important. Representative McDonald. Well, I'm compelled to speak because if we just sit down and let one or two speak and mention that we don't really care about the rules, I think that we're setting a, not a dangerous situation, but a very unfair situation. 
that if we're going to completely disregard the rules, we might as well rip this up right now and throw it away. Because if you're not going to abide by the rules that you set, what good is it? What good are the rules if we're not going to use them? What rule won't you break next time? Should we just sit here, keep quiet, not say a thing? Is that what you expect of us? Representative Murphy, you said when you first took this great position of a majority leader that you were fair and honest and that you're going to work with the minority and you think that we'll be happy with working with the caucus, with the majority, that doesn't make us happy that you completely disregard rules. Throw them away. Well, if we can't abide by the rules, then we might as well throw this rule book away. Isn't that the truth? If we're not going to abide by the rules, Mr. Speaker, and you said yourself, you're, you're, let's see, I got it quoted. Hang on. Since I have the floor, I can be patient here. Here's what you said. Speaker Teason said that we hope that we govern well because that's what the people of Minnesota sent us here to do. Well, I tell you what, folks, when you break the rules, you're not governing well. You don't govern well when you break your own house rules, period. End of story. And the news don't care. Mary LaHammer and Eric Escala, they don't even have the lights on. They're not going to report this. It doesn't make a hill of beans to the average person out there, but it makes a difference to me. It makes a difference to every one of us who are in the minority, and it should make a difference to you folks who are talking right now when I'm speaking. Can you please quiet him down a little bit, Mr. Speaker? Have a little respect for the guy who's speaking. Now you can clearly see we're upset about this, and you would be too. Representative Pulowski, you wouldn't answer my questions, but I know you're a, a respectful man, and you respect truth, you respect rules and authority, and clearly your party is breaking the rules. We're not making this up just for the heck of it. My goodness, you don't think we have committees to get to and family members to go home to? You think we'd be either rather on the phone here or on the floor talking about this? No, we're awfully upset and you completely ignore us. Some of you are smiling, you don't give a rats. Well, it's disrespectful. You reap what you sow, folks. You reap what you sow. So if you're going to disregard the rules and break it and say the heck with the minority, well, then you're going to be sorry for some reason, when it comes back to bite you. Because remember, when you break rules and you're not nice in the, in the sandbox, it comes back to bite you. And if that's what you care, if you don't care, then so be it. Break the rules if you want. Throw the book away. Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll. Clerk will close the roll. Isaacson's a yes. You need. There being 72 ayes and 58 nays, uh, the report is adopted. 1448. Roll call being requested. Seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. House file 1448, would the author of that, uh, Representative Norton, yield for a question? She'll yield. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And Representative Norton, maybe you could tell us what this bill does? Representative Norton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Doubt, this is the Human Services Department bill modifying payment methodologies for home and community-based services. Representative Doubt. Uh, would she yield for another question? She will, Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Norton. Is, is this a controversial bill? Is this something that we, uh, that we should not allow to move forward, or is it, uh, is it something that probably will get uh, most uh, bipartisan votes at the end of the, at the, end of the uh, when it comes here for a vote? Is it, is it controversial, or is it, uh, will it be a pretty broadly supported bill? Representative Norton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Representative Dowd, I think this bill has uh, some amount of controversy, but it's not partisan controversy. It's controversy among uh, providers out in the community, and I do think uh, looking forward to a good hearing uh, with lots of discussion, and we'll see what happens after that. Representative Dowd. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Representative Norton. Um, sounds like it probably is something that should proceed. But unfortunately, it didn't meet the 10-day deadline. It's in violation of House Rule 1.10. Members, I think we've talked about that. I think you're familiar with what that says. And somehow we've allowed the Rules Committee to waive a House Rule. Rule 1.10, paragraph 3. In regular session, a bill prepared by a department or agency of state government must be introduced and given its first reading at least 10 days before the date of the first committee deadline. Mr. Speaker, would the author yield for another question? She will yield. Representative thank, you, thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Norton. Was this bill introduced uh, more than 10 days before the first committee deadline? Representative Norton. No. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Norton. This bill didn't meet the deadline, guys. Rule 1.10 is pretty clear. In regular session, a bill prepared by a department or agency of state government must be introduced and given its first reading at least 10 days before the date of the first committee deadline. This bill is in violation of that rule. And yet we've allowed the Rules Committee to waive that rule and let this bill move forward. Would Representative Murphy yield for a question? She'll yield. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Murphy. Are there other rules in here that we're going to be waiving or allowing the Rules Committee to waive? Maybe you could go through and tell us if there's other things that we can expect uh, can be waived now by the Rules Committee. Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Dowd. I'm not going to answer your hypothetical questions. I will tell you instead that when we finish tonight, the Transportation Policy Committee is going to meet, the Judiciary Committee is going to meet, the Energy Policy is going to meet, the Health and Human Services Policy Committee is going to meet, and the Governmental Operations Committee is going to meet. They're going to meet tonight to do the work of the people, the work that we're sent here to do. I understand that you're upset. We are abiding by the rules. I'm not going to answer your hypothetical question. I'm going to ask members to vote for the adoption of the committee report. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and, and uh, Representative Murphy. I appreciate that. Uh, maybe you could also give us the times and places and we could save some time later in the agenda under announcements so people understand when and where those committees will be meeting. We could run a little more efficiently here. You know another way that we could run more efficiently here, members? Maybe you guessed it. We could follow our rules. We could have introduced a motion at the desk here today not to, not to allow the Rules Committee to waive our House rules. We could have introduced a motion at the desk here today, most likely would have passed unanimously, to allow these bills to continue to travel on. Instead, dangerous precedents that we've set. We're allowing the Rules Committee of this body to waive House Rule 1.10. We've heard the author talk about that this bill likely is not that controversial. We've heard the author, author say that they didn't meet the 10-day deadline on introduction of this bill. We know that this bill is in violation of Rule 1.10. But for some reason, we think we've followed the rules because we allowed the Rules Committee to waive a House rule. I'll remind you that I asked Representative Davids to yield for a question. He's been here a little longer than me. I know I'm new. I thought these rules meant something. <laughs> Who was I kidding? Who was I kidding? Because over the last couple of years, they did mean something. Maybe they don't anymore. Guys, in case you're not paying attention, this is your last opportunity to vote with me. This is your last opportunity to do it the right way. We can still send this one back to the Rules Committee. In fact, I bet before we're done here, we could have a motion at the front desk and this thing could pass to send this thing on. We could do it the right way. Not allow a minority of this body to waive our rules on something that didn't meet the deadline. We've heard from the author. 
We're violating our rules. But that's not the egregious crime here today. The egregious crime is we're allowing the Rules Committee to waive the House rules. Would the Majority Leader yield for a question? She'll yield. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And maybe I could make this a, a, a point of parliamentary inquiry, but I'll ask the Majority Leader. If there's a motion in this body and 71 people vote one way and 58 people vote the other way, do the 58 people win? Majority Leader, is that the way it works here? Does a minority of this body get to decide what we do? Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And it's, a, I think, a hypothetical question. Not sure. Depends on how you define winning, I suppose. But, you know, generally speaking, the majority uh, rules the day here. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And thank you, Representative Murphy. You're exactly right. But not today. Not today, members. A minority of this body decided what was going to happen today. We let the Rules Committee make a decision for us. Not today. A majority of this body doesn't rule the day today. Every other day I think it does, or I think it has. I'm a little worried about the future, though, members. You heard the majority leader say, a majority of this body rules the day. Not today, members. Not today. And what we really need to worry about is what happens after today. These, rule, these, these bills, as I said, non-controversial. Nobody cares whether these continue on. They're fine. Let's debate them. But what happens when the controversial one pops up? The one that we decided, maybe it's better if we don't give the public a lot of time to, to stew on this one. And we introduce it after the deadlines. After the committee deadlines. I could go through this entire rule book and talk about the different rules now that apparently we're going to let the Rules Committee waive. I'm going to spare you the torture. I think you understand that I'm upset about this. And you know what? You should be upset too. Because today in this body, the majority didn't rule the day. Today we let a minority of this body. I'm interested how the Speaker is going to call the next vote. I've been watching the last few. It'll be 70, 71, 72 in favor, 58, 59 against. I'm really interested if he's going to say, motion fails, 59 against, and the minority of this body is going to rule the day. Because shouldn't we be consistent, members? Shouldn't we say that it's okay that the minority of this body rules the day? Maybe that's going to happen. I don't know. I'm kind of curious. But you heard your majority leader. You heard the author of this bill say that this bill didn't meet the rule. This bill violated our House rules. And you heard the majority leader. The majority of this body should rule the day. What you've done today, members, is you've given away your right. Now a minority of this body gets to rule the day. They didn't seize that right. You gave it to them. You go back into your districts and talk to your constituents about how well you're representing them. You know what you, you do? You put in your literature, I'm going to go up to St. Paul and I'm going to stand up to the party bosses. That's not what you did. You're letting the party bosses tell you what to do. They voted for you today. The Rules Committee voted for you today. They waived your rules. The rules that we all said that we wanted to govern this body with. And you gave that right away. You know, I told the story when, I was, when we were debating the rules that some years ago I went to Washington, D.C. And, and I watched, I was in both chambers. And I remember being shocked because when I watched on TV, I saw a member speaking to the body. And I envisioned that that body was full of people listening. I notice the longer this goes on, the more people are actually listening. I hope I'm entertaining you. But I hope you're actually getting mad. I hope that you're saying, you know what? This guy's actually got a point. We can't let the Rules Committee waive the rules of the House. 
But I remember being shocked when I was in the chamber in Washington, D.C. Both chambers. You had one member like me standing at a microphone speaking at a scheduled time to an empty room. Nobody was there. That's what you're doing today, members. I see you over there mulling around, not paying attention, talking to each other, eating. You might as well not be here. It might be just like D.C. I appreciate, Representative Faust, that you're listening intently. And you have been the whole time. I appreciate that. That's what frustrates people in our district, members. That's what frustrates them. They, don't, they imagine that in this chamber, much like I did when I visited the chambers in D.C., I thought those rooms were full. I thought we actually had the opportunity to stand up, make a great debate about an issue, and that we could change somebody's mind. And you know what? I think people at home believe that. I'm sad to report today, members, not in this chamber, and not when I was in D.C. They schedule their votes. And in the House, they come in with a card. They don't even have an assigned seat anymore. They come in at the scheduled time, they swipe their card, they press their button, and they leave. Nobody listens to debate. You can't change anybody's mind in D.C. anymore. You know how bills get passed? In smoky back rooms. In the dark of night, because deals get cut. And now, that's the way we're going to conduct our business here, apparently. We're going to let a minority of this body in some committee waive our House rules. Maybe it's not dangerous right now, members. Maybe it doesn't matter on these bills, but it's going to matter. And I remember seeing that in the chamber and just being shocked, thinking, gosh, I thought that when these people were in session and on the floor, that they were conducting business. That these great debates by great orators were falling on attentive ears and that they actually were changing minds. I don't know if I'm changing minds, members. I'm going to keep talking a little more because I want to see if I can. I want to see if this body can do the right thing and you got one last opportunity. This is the last one of these bills. It's the last opportunity we have to send this bill to the Rules Committee I can't imagine how many times we could have had a motion drafted to send these rules on and placed at this desk right now, tonight, and we wouldn't have to stand here and listen to members talk about the egregious violation of our House rules. You want to know why we're here? Because we can't follow our own rules. Why? I think it's pride. I think we can't admit, yeah, you know what, maybe the minority has a point. Maybe our rules do mean something. I don't know. You can answer that question for yourself. I don't know what the reason is. Seems pretty foolish that we're still here listening to an argument about why we shouldn't violate our House rules when we could have solved this an hour ago. You think I want to be here? Nope. And I'm sure all of you want to be in committee, listening to all the bills that need to be processed before a committee deadline. But here we are. And I wonder if, like in D.C., my argument's falling on deaf ears here. But, members, you have an opportunity to prove to the people in your district that when somebody stands up and makes a good argument, rock solid, crystal clear about what our rules say, that they actually can change somebody's mind. Actually, I might consider it a victory if I just get a couple of you on the next one. Because I don't care. I think the bill actually should move. It's not controversial. This isn't about the bill. It's about our rules. And maybe Representative Faust, who's been listening this whole time, and nodding his head every once in a while, maybe he'll give me his vote. And maybe you will too. That you'll have to decide. But what message do you want to send back into your district's members? Because people at home watching on TV are thinking, 
This room's full. And it's full of people listening to a debate. That these words are falling on attentive ears and somebody's mind is going to be changed. That's what they think at home. But you've got one last opportunity, members, to prove to them that somebody's mind can be changed. I kind of hope there's a groundswell going on over there right now. Throw me a bone, members. Let's do this one bill the right way. Would Representative Norton yield for one question? She will yield. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And Representative Norton, is it, a, is it of, of dire need that we pass this bill on right now? Does this thing need to proceed to committee today? Does this thing need to be signed into law as soon as possible? Or could we take a little time, think about what we're doing here, send this back to the Rules Committee, and maybe we'll decide we don't want to set a dangerous precedence. Maybe we'll decide it should move the proper way. Is this that big an emergency that it needs to, to go out of here today? Representative Norton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, as a matter of fact, this is an extremely important bill that's been worked on for some time. It does deserve a hearing where the people can weigh in. I believe it has its hearing on Friday morning, and I hope the folks that are listening that have uh, interest in this bill will come and testify, because that's what this body is all about, listening to the people, making certain bills get a good hearing. And so I would encourage folks to let this bill uh, pass and vote no on Representative Doubt's uh, motion and yes uh, in support of the speakers and the majority leader's actions. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Norton. I appreciate that. Sounds like it is an important bill. Sounds like we should let it move. Would the majority leader yield for a question? She'll yield. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Murphy, do we still have time? Could we put in a motion today to allow this? I mean, if we defeat this, can this bill still move on? Could we put in a motion and unanimously pass it to allow this bill uh, to waive House Rule 1.10 and allow this, move to, this bill to move on? Could we still do that today, yet this session, because this important bill needs to move? Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Doubt. Uh, you know, I would have to look at the calendar to make sure I uh, could figure that path out. But here's the thing. Abiding by our rules, the bill is already in the committee and scheduled for a hearing. And that's good news for the people of Minnesota. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Representative Murphy. Did you say that the bill's actually in committee? Would she yield for a question? She'll yield. Representative Murphy. Mr. Speaker and Representative Doubt, uh, I am uh, I, it's on its way to the Health and Human Services Committee, and it will be heard. I think it's scheduled for hearing. I understand it's scheduled for hearing on Friday. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Murphy. I, I appreciate that because uh, it was my understanding that we need to. This motion needs to pass for this bill to go to committee. Um, right now, it it was in the Rules Committee. Uh, it's it's moving here through this body. But, but what the Rules Committee did was they put a, a, a motion in place that said that we would waive uh, further actions under, under uh, House Rule 1.10. Uh, so that's actually traveling with this. And we've allowed the Rules Committee to waive our House rules to allow this bill to, to, to proceed. I want to make an offer to the Majority Leader. And I don't speak for my members because I've trained them not to listen to the party bosses in St. Paul. I've trained them to sit very respectfully and listen to debate and make up their own mind. That's what, their, that's what their constituents expect them to do. So I can't speak for them, but I will tell you that if we need to actually suspend the rules to allow us to take up a motion, to allow this bill to proceed in a manner that's consistent with House Rule uh, 1.10 by a motion of this body, I will stand up and make a very compelling argument. And I hope you think I can be compelling. I think we're yet to find out. I, I see a, Oh, nope, Faust is back there. He's still listening. Had to stretch his legs, but he's still listening. I hope I've won his vote. But I'm willing to stand up and make that compelling argument that will allow this bill to travel in the appropriate manner. If we need to suspend the rules, I'll stand up and make that compelling argument. And I think I can convince my members on this side of the aisle. But as I said, they don't always listen to me. 
I've told them, you answer to your constituents first. Don't listen to the party bosses in St. Paul because that's what their constituents expect of them. But I'm going to make that offer. If you want to do that, I will speak in favor of a motion to suspend the rules if that's what we need to do. And we could have done it a hundred times already, members. But we're still here talking about an egregious violation to our own house rules. I'm going to sit down now and I'm going to be quiet. And I hope that, that over the last few minutes, maybe more than a few minutes, that I've convinced somebody over there. I really hope I've convinced Representative Faust. And I thank him so much for listening intently. Maybe a few more. We'll see how it goes. But I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to make one final plea, members. We can do this, and we can do it the right way. It's not too late, but I will warn you. Fair warning, this is your final opportunity. There isn't another one. This is the last bill. So I'm going to ask you, please let the people back in your district know that when somebody stood on this House floor today, that it wasn't like the way Washington, D.C. operates, where nobody's listening and where nobody's mind can be changed. And they're actually going to see that your mind was changed because you voted the other way on all the other bills. But this is your last opportunity to salvage our House rules and to prove to the people back in your district that you don't only listen to the party bosses in St. Paul, that you sat in your seats intently listening, and that the argument didn't fall on deaf ears, that those ears were attentive. And you said, you know what? He's got a very good point. But this is your final opportunity, members, and I'm going to ask you one last time, prove to me and prove to the people back in your district that you're here listening to them and you're doing your job. Please give me a red vote. Let's do this the right way. Representative Pepin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would the majority leader yield to a question? She'll yield, Representative Pepin. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And, um, Representative Murphy, I missed a little bit of session, and perhaps this was already asked, but I'm trying to follow this whole argument, and I'm, um, I can't find in the rules, maybe you can point it out to me, where, where it says that a committee can throw out the rules of the whole, wave the rules of the entire House. Is that in the House rules somewhere that I'm just not seeing? Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Pepin. We did discuss this at length uh, at the start of uh, our hour long now de debate. And so let me say one more time it is a combination of the House rules, the joint rules, and custom and usage that has given the Rules Committee in the past the ability to move uh, an agency bill through the Rules Committee to the Committee of Jurisdiction. Representative Pepin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Murphy. Well, you know, we gave a lot of consideration to the rules, hours and hours and hours of talking about transparency and how our goal this year was to make sure we were transparent to the public, and that's why we were going to apparently have the amendments in 24 hours in advance so that we weren't going to be able to uh, rely on constituents to get back to us during this, but that instead we're going to have to make sure that they got the information in 24 hours in advance. And we talked about how important it was. We went through the rules in detail. And I wasn't very happy with a lot of the rules. And um, we had several amendments that I thought would have made the rules much better. But be that as it may, the rules passed. They were the rules that were clearly written by the majority. And I've always maintained that, and I mentioned this in Rules Committee, that the rules are meant to protect the minority, and this is exactly the type of protection that I'm talking about. This is a, just, you know, everyone here understands that the governor is a Democrat, the Democrats run the House, the Democrats run the Senate, but people still repre represent the state who are Republicans. We represent our constituents, and we are just as expected to represent the people who elect us as you are. And so when we put rules into place and we don't follow them, it really sends a message to the people of Minnesota that if you're represented by a member of the minority, your voice doesn't count. Representative Murphy, I, um, I'm wondering if you could yield to another question. She will yield. Representative Pepin. Representative Murphy, I'm wondering if you've had a chance to review 
Mason's Manual, Chapter 56, Section 615. Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And Representative Pepin, I have not. Representative Pepin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Murphy. I think, I think Section 615 makes a lot of sense. It's Mason's, Mason's uh, manual, and I understand this falls below the rules, but since we're not following the rules, perhaps we should follow Mason's manual. Um, Mason's manual says that committees are instruments or agencies of the body appointing them, and their function is to carry out the will of that body. A legislative body cannot delegate its power to a committee. Let me repeat that section, members. A legislative body cannot delegate its powers to a committee. And that appears to be what we're doing here. Further, all its, all its acts are subject to review by the body and may be approved or rejected. Committee acts are recommendations only, et cetera, et cetera. This has gone far beyond the scope of what a committee should be. And I'm not sure if, if people at home know who are watching this understand that the Rules Committee is just made of a few members of the House. There are 134 members of the House of Representatives, and fewer than a fourth of them are on the Rules Committee. So that means that every member who, are, who is not on the Rules Committee did not have a say on whether or not the rules should be waived, whether the rules of the entire House should be waived. And that's outrageous. I don't think any member should feel good about telling their constituents that just a fraction of the House of Representatives decided that they could independently waive the rules of the entire House. That means that more than three-fourths of the state didn't have a voice in this. That's not right, members. And I don't recall in custom and usage this ever happening before. Um, you know, I guess you'll vote how you will. As Representative Doubt said, this is your last chance to make a vote on this. If you really and truly meant what you said when we talked about transparency and the importance of it, the importance of rules, then I would suggest that we, that we send this back. This is, not, this is out of order. I'm just, all I can do is appeal to you. You're in the majority. I, have, I don't have as much power anymore. I'm in the minority. Senate Republicans are in the minority. The governor's Democrat. We get it. You have all the power. But members, this really isn't right. And sometimes you might be in the minority. That body has changed quite often. And unless you're on the Rules Committee, apparently you're not going to have very much power. So members, I, I would suggest you think long and hard before making this vote. And once, you, once we decide to waive the rules, what else can happen? What other rules are we going to waive? Why do we even have rules if we're not going to even follow them? We're not following the House rules. We're not following Mason's manuals. I really don't know what rules we're following. It, it just seems like we're just going to just make it up as we go. Just make up the rules as we go. You know, I guess if you're in charge, you can do that. You can just decide as you go along how the rules are going to be made. That's not right, and I think we're all above that. So, members, this is your chance. I urge you to make the right decision. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll. Mr. Speaker. Representative Hurtas. I've been standing here for quite a long time. I thought you had recognized me, and you said there was no more discussion. That's not quite right. Uh, you were uh, you weren't standing. I stood here for ten minutes while Mr. Uh, Representative Dowd was speaking. Oh, and then you, you looked right at me. You sat down again, Representative Pertus. I apologize. The clerk can close the roll. Wills votes no. Scott votes no. There being 72 ayes and 57 nays, the uh, report is adopted. Second reading of House Files. Second reading of House File 92. 
Second reading. Second reading, House Bill 228. Second reading. Second reading, House Bill 446. Second reading. Second reading, House Bill 501. Second reading. Second reading, House Bill 589. Second reading. Second reading, House Bill 591. Second reading. Second reading, House Bill 621. Second reading. Second reading, House Bill 623. Second reading. Second reading, House Bill 644. Second reading. Second reading, House Bill 669. Second reading. Second reading, House Bill 688. Second reading. Second reading, House Bill 704. Second reading. Second reading, House Bill 760. Second reading. Second reading, House Bill 782. Second reading. Second reading, House Bill 1814. Second reading. Second reading, House Bill. 814. Second reading. Second reading, House File 820. Second reading. Second reading, House File 838. Second, Second reading. reading, House File 854. Second, Second reading, House File 865. Second reading, Second House File 879. Second reading, Second reading, House File 969. Second reading, Second reading, House File 997. Second reading, Second reading, House File 1000. Second reading. Second reading 1001. Second reading. Second reading house file 1006. Second reading. Second reading house file 1028. Second reading house file 1067. Second reading. Second reading house file 1079. Second reading. Second reading house file 1124. Second reading. Second reading house file 1147. Second reading. Second reading house file 1243. Second reading. And second reading house file 1301. Second reading. Introduction of bills. The following house file has been offered for introduction today. The Chief Clerk will report the House Files and give them their first reading. Introduction and first reading of House Files 1480 through 1557. First reading, House Files 1480 through 1557. <laughs> Messages from the Senate. Message from the Senate. Mr. Speaker, I hereby announce the Senate exceeds the request of the House for the appointment of a conference committee on House File 5, an act relating to commerce. The Senate has appointed as such, conf such committee Lori, Sharon, Hayden, Goodwin, and Metzen. Signed, Joanne M. Zoff, Secretary of the Senate. Motions and resolutions. Uh, members, the copies of the non-controversial motions are at the House desk and online. If there's no objection, those motions will uh, we'll take those motions up first. Hearing no objection, those motions prevail. Mariani moves that House File 640 be recalled from the Committee on Education Policy and re referred to the Committee on Education Finance. Representative Mariani. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This uh, bill was inadvertently referred to the Policy Committee. It deals with charter schools and state aids and how we handle the, the, uh, uh, the charter schools' ability to use state aids to borrow out in the marketplace. It really is purely a finance issue. Uh, the finance chair uh, uh, agrees, and so uh, would ask for your support. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All opposed, no. Motion prevails. Lane moves that House File 662 be recalled from the Committee on Judiciary, Finance, and Policy and be referred to the Committee on Civil Law. Representative Lane. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This has to do with um, the Health Department removing residential exclusions from their bill that has to do with radon disclosures. Therefore, it does not have to go to judiciary and can move on. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the motion say aye. All opposed? Motion prevails. Winkler moves that House File 863, now on the General Register, be re referred to the Committee on Judiciary, Finance, and Policy. Representative Winkler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, uh, this uh, motion is just to, cl to correct a clerical mistake. The bill's already being heard in judiciary, and it should not have gone to the General Register. It should have gone to ju judiciary. It's the campaign finance bill. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All opposed, no. Motion prevails. Sundin moves that House File 865 now on the General Register be re referred to the Committee on Civil Law. Representative Sundin. Mr. Speaker, after further scrutinization of the bill, uh, it was decided by uh, a number of the uh, committee members that, uh, that we needed a little more daylight on the financial implications of this uh, bill, so uh, we ask that it be uh, re referred. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Oh, Representative Holbert. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the author yield? He will yield. Representative Holbert. Could you uh, tell the body what your bill is about? Um. This, uh, Representative Sundin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative, this is an uh, uh, agency bill that uh, deals with the recycling of uh, paint, carpet, and batteries. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the motion say aye. All opposed, no. 
The motion prevails. Dabney moves that House File 624, be, 924 be recalled from the Committee on Education Policy and be referred to the Committee on Education Finance. Representative Dabney. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, this bill deals with uh, increasing funding for developmental screening uh, and responding to graduation incentives program uh, changes for students who meet certain classifications. It's uh, got finance implications. Uh, I've spoken with both chairs, and they're fine with the re-referral. Thank you. Representative Keel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Representative Dabney, um, this looks to me like we should be talking about this in education policy first. I notice there is some, uh, some wording in here that uh, changes, uh, makes this a little different. Can you um, explain why we're missing education policy? Representative Dabney. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Representative Keel, the policy provisions have been amended to other bills. We've dealt with it in education, with, with the education policy provisions in education policy already. Representative Keel. Thank you. Um, Mr. Speaker, can you ask everybody to be a little quieter? And do you want Representative Dabney to repeat his answer? I'm done. Just okay. was hard to hear him. All right. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. The motion prevails. Abler moves that House File 1063 be recalled from the Committee on Health and Human Service uh, Policy and we refer to the Committee on Health and Human Services Finance. Representative Abler. Thank you. And Mr. Speaker, this is a bill you worked on in the past. Actually, uh, it has to do with uh, uh, defining some uh, a fraud and medical assistance to people who lie about uh, their income. And uh, it's, uh, it's a fiscal matter. It should go to the Health and Human Services Finance. Appreciate your support. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All opposed, no. Motion prevails. So into Rule 4.30, Myra moved that House File Number 604 be recalled from the Committee on Education Policy, be given its second reading, and be advanced to the General Register. Representative Myra. Mr. Speaker, members, uh, this is House File 604. It's my transparency bill. I have agreement among 10 stakeholder groups on the amended language. I have spoken with Chair Mariani about um, whether he wants it or not, and I understand he doesn't need to see it in his committee. I also understand that there is no other committee that uh, needs to see it. Uh, please support uh, my motion. Thank you. Representative Mariani. Uh, Mr. Speaker, members, uh, Representative Myron and I have had this conversation. She's correct. Uh, I've looked over the bill, spoken with the stakeholders. Uh, there really is no need for my committee to see this bill. Okay. All right, seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the uh, motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion prevails. The clerk will give the bill uh, its second reading. Second reading, House File 604. Second reading. Oh, I got a couple more. Ward J.A. moves that House File 1087 be returned to its author. Representative Ward. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This doesn't seem to be the time to be doing this bill. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the motion say aye. All opposed, no. That motion prevails. Davids moves that House File 1229 be returned to its author. Representative Davids. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, this bill has to do with fees on auto and homeowners policies to fund a volunteer, well, firefighters' pensions. Uh, this is a bill, uh, it's basically a duplicate bill. Chair Atkins has one that I'm, I believe, the second author on, and I'll be throwing my full weight. Or, or my full support behind the Atkins bill, uh, so I would just like this one uh, returned. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All opposed, no. 
Motion prevails. Winkler moves that House File 1435 be recalled from the Committee on Education Policy and re referred to the Committee on Education Finance. Representative Winkler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, uh, I've talked to the chairs of these committees. They're fine with this change. It's a bill that basically moves an uh, electronic portfolio system to a different agency, and we'll find some money to do that. Any discussion? Representative Keel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Winkler, can you, uh, this is also one that should have gone to the education policy first. Can you explain what's happening here? Representative Winkler. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Representative Keel, there is an electronic portfolio system that is owned by Minskew. Uh, I think they're going to phase it out, and this is a technology platform that could be used for uh, higher ed and potentially for uh, high schools. But the bill is not a policy bill. It's basically moving a piece of technology and finding some money to keep it going. Representative Keel. Um, when I read through this, it looks to me like it could have some implications between the high school and the Minsky system, college systems. Is that, am I reading it wrong? Representative Keel, uh, Representative Winkler will yield. Representative Winkler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Keel, uh, I, I don't anticipate that that will be the case. It may be, but the point is that can be resolved in education finance because it really is primarily finding a way to keep this program alive at all. The rest of those things may or may not happen. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All opposed, no. Motion prevails. Okay. Announcements. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, I know we're not supposed to do points of personal privilege, but I want people at home to know that not everything we do here is, uh, is on a partisan basis, so I'd like to offer uh, the Majority Leader a very happy birthday. Right. Further announcements? Representative Hillstrom. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Just a reminder that the Judiciary Policy and Finance Committee will be meeting in 400 North immediately following session to pass out House File 863, which we've already heard all of the testimony on. Okay. Representative Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And announcement that the uh, Government Operations Committee will reconvene at, as, I'll give you 10 minutes after session, in Room 5. Representative Dill. Uh, environment policy in 20 minutes. Representative Liebling. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, Health and Human Services policy will meet in 15 minutes in room 10 in the State Office Building. Representative Lesh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, the Civil Law Committee will be meeting immediately after <laughs> Representative Hillstrom's Judiciary Committee, Committee meeting in 400 North. Representative Earhart. Uh, transportation policy in uh, room 500 South, 15 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Hortman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, uh, the Energy Policy Committee will be meeting in the basement starting at 8 o'clock. Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 3 p.m. Thursday, March 14, 2013. Representative Murphy moves that when the House adjourned today, it adjourned until 3 p.m. Thursday, March 14th, 2013. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, no. no. The motion prevails. Representative Murphy. Mr. Speaker, I move that the House do now adjourn. Representative Mur Murphy moves that the House do now adjourn. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, no. no. The motion prevails. The House stands adjourned until 3 p.m. Thursday, March 14th, 2013.